Yore yore waka, tunalaya waka, tunalaya ma pupu nyudam waka. Tunalaya waka, tunalaya ma wa, keale ya ma pupu yore waka. Tunalaya waka, tunalaya ma wa, yore yore waka nyudam waka. Baya dera tunalaya ma wa, yore yore waka. This area, Dooki, in, in the hills, yeah. is so important to Yorta Yorta in terms of our traditional connection. If you're teaching a young person about you know, where their traditional boundaries are, yeah. you could do it from, say, something somewhere like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can see, um, I think it's Mount Gwyn right over in the distance on the, on the horizon. Uh, that's New South Wales, so the, yeah. that's still in Yorta Yorta country, yeah. even that far yeah. away. Well, our like, country goes right yeah. up to the Billabong. Yeah. And down all this side of yeah. Urana yeah. Lake. Further, you know in that direction the Wiradjuri, mm. down this way, you say further to the south, you know the Tungarong, Tungarong. Work, work, this the, way, yeah. Wamba Wamba, yeah, Wamba Wamba, yeah. Mutty Mutty. You built up that bird's eye view mm. image in your head as a, as a traditional owner yeah. to know where different things on your country were, like yeah. whether it was a tool yeah. making yeah. site or whether it was yeah. know, where water it. holes were. That's so important to our people even today still. To, yeah pass on that knowledge that yep. all your, your children should possess. Yeah, you got to know your country. We want to talk about some of the stone artefacts that were manufactured in the Dookie area, particularly up here in Mount Major, and also to the southeast of us there, about 10 k's from here. There's a a site there where these stone artefacts that we've got here were rediscovered and it's a part of an old lunette there swamp area that is now dry obviously from farming activities out there so they're fashioned pretty roughly here then taken down to where there was a permanent water source and started to be finished off. Well this one here you could see the groove in it had a lot of work there where they probably sharpened the uh, spear heads in there and knives for themselves, stone knives. And then this is the hammer stone. And this is where they put their thumb here and there when they wanted to uh, flake off stuff. With this here, you could see where they were chipping away there and just so we get our flakes down there yeah. for cutting or gutting fish and things yeah. like that. And sinews out of kangaroo tails, yeah. that was their knives. So they didn't have to carry big stuff around. Yeah, yeah. And these are the things we look for. And we know that our people camped there. There are occupational sites where they set and made their tools. If you can imagine the swampland area would have looked like, you had you know, that water there um, for longer periods of time. So you had the reeds, you had the medicinal plants that would have been there, the bird life of different sorts that would have been there. Our wetlands were our nurseries. Yeah. yeah. You know, it bred our yeah. water beetles, yeah. water spiders, yeah. the little yeah. miniature fish, yeah. Yeah. yabbies. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's not many natural water courses around yeah. now yeah. because yeah. we interfered with them. When we were kids, we were never allowed to interfere with natural stuff. No. Anything yeah. that was yeah. natural, yeah. we had to leave. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And that applies right across your country. Right across your, your, your country. country. Oh. You had to respect the land. Yeah. You had to treat it in the way that you know you looked after it, it look after you. Down there there's a bit of a swampy spot down there. In the winter it would get water in it, like in the birds and the ducks. I've been down there and caught little baby ducks. You know, when they come out, little black ducks. But as the story goes, Gappy went down to where they mostly lived and those mittens were still warm, so they could have only been gone a week, probably. But they all headed for the Broken River. And it floods a bit, but we've gone and drained it gone there. We've got drains all through it and drained it. Where it would get water in it like that. Now it wouldn't, I don't get that much. My grandfather, Papa Jeff Atkinson, yeah. Yeah. he told me about where our people learnt to 
the crabbery from the brolga. Oh yeah. Brolga start yeah. dancing around yeah. showing off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, no, that's true. This is one of the things our ancestors did, there's a scarred tree here. Yeah. 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 You know? Didn't ring bark it, eh? No, they yeah. didn't ring bark it. And up here you could see yeah. a hash mark. This scar here, it's probably, you know, less than a couple of hundred years old. There's another scar tree, but it's a smaller one. What was this one? This was a coolerman. Coolermans were made, yeah. and, uh, and the women used them to go out and cut berries and nuts yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. even some of the, the old Yorta Yorta men yeah. took them out to put the eggs and that in. Yeah, yeah. And they were used yeah. for, for babies. Yeah. For putting babies yeah. in as well. Yeah. I remember. My grandfather telling me that they used to make little miniature canoes. Yeah, yeah. Put a um, string, pull it along, yeah. and put everything they collected out yeah. in the floodwaters. Yeah. So you walk along wading. Yeah. And so when you had to go and chase a bird yeah. to get him or whatever yeah. else, you didn't have to drop everything in the water. Yeah, that's right. It just floated on that yeah. canoe, yeah. that little small canoe. Yeah. Our Yorta Yorta ancestor that did this was pretty well skilled at removing bark from trees. Yeah. That was bigger yeah. because when mm. we'd be recording them, yeah. the regrowth, see yeah. how it's going back yeah. in? So yeah. that'd be out from up about there. See where it's swelling there? Yeah. Yeah. And out to about here. But that tree's healthy still. Well, there you go. Oh. The other thing that I know that's important here too, Brolgas come here and nest quite regularly, but that's another added reason why we need to you know, make these areas like Moody Swamp high priority areas to be looked after. Yeah. So over here, you'll see yeah. where the turtle nest was here. The turtle would lay, cover yeah. them up, and, yeah. and the eggs then, the, the heat of the sand would hatch them. Yeah. But what's happened over the years through the foxes? come along and smell yeah, where the yeah. eggs are and they dig them up yeah, and, yeah, and wild cats and eat yeah, them. Yeah. But these come out natural because yeah, yeah. the shell is still there. As soon as they're born, yeah. they head straight through the water. Because yeah. we used to eat a lot of turtles and we yeah. haven't been eating them for a few years now because there's not many around. Yeah, you know, everything depends on these swamps. The fact that we don't get natural flows anymore down these creek systems that are associated with these swamps like Moody Swamp because we are noticing a drop in numbers in yeah, and the turtles and everything. That's what we need to get better at. Yeah, because uh, water's life, we all know that. It's, yeah. You know, without water we won't survive. Yeah. And same as our, our animals, our turtles, our fish. There's environmental reasons why we can uh, protect these areas, but for us, the environmental stuff and the audio traditional knowledge and culture, it's all interwoven, it's all tied up in the same thing. It's all important for us to uh, preserve these areas. Um, so we've still got a continued association with our country. So we can keep practicing continual passing on our traditional knowledge to our children and, our, and, and our other generations. Kangaroo grass, uh, the best stand I know of in Dookie, is up on top of the quarry. It's really thick and uh, and I've never sort of seen so much in, in one area. Apart from that, we'd have to harvest along roadsides where, you know, little pockets of kangaroo grass might grow. So there's no large fields of kangaroo grass anywhere these days. Let's see if I can find you a seed. There it is. So to your to your people, the kangaroo grass is a um, seed source yep. for our people to collect and make the flour and the bread, which is an important part of our diet. Yeah, everyday diet, yeah. more or less. Yeah. You ought to do still utilise uh, traditional foods, bush tuckers and stuff. Yeah. And, um, and they crushed it on, with them. Right? Yeah, but this is important also, but the stay in this region, eh? So what they've done with that, they put it in there. Yeah. So these were very important. And that's all we want. Now, if landowners have got anything like that, if they come forward with them to the Aboriginal people in that area, in our case, as Yorta Yorta, we'd, we'd be wrapped. And we respect them people for, for that. And we respect them for looking after our native grasses and working together, have that understanding that they're just not old stone to throw away and, and throw in a pile, you know. That's our history. It's not written down. It's in stone, yeah, yeah. in the wind. Yeah, yeah. 
We haven't slowed down at all. If anything, we've got bigger. So the demand for Indigenous seed is more at the forefront these days of what we need to do to get a balanced ecosystem and people are more aware of it. Groups like Land Care and other government groups like Catchment Management Authority do a lot of work along rivers, in parks and also grant incentives for farmers who do want to have a bit of area that they want to revegetate or join onto a piece of remnant bush, which is always one of the best results. <laughs> traditional knowledge and our um, understanding of these natural resources, mm. food resources and stuff, why can't they be utilised today to yep. support everyone in the future? Yeah. Sustains population. You know, the, the farmers, the landowners yeah. now, so it, it's up to them, I reckon, now yeah. they've got to look at how they're going to grow a certain wheat or rice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because to me, yeah. when I walk out in the forest, that's one big supermarket. Yeah. That's our supermarket. Mm. That's how we survive. It's the thing that constantly amazes me. We're descendants from you know, great people you who know, existed in this country for a long time. It's you know, a privilege to be a part of it. You'd just imagine they're out there and they would have saw creation stories in there of the army and they would have saw, and like I said about from here, they see spaces where they possibly would have did fire stick burning and, and opened up a patch of grass over there and knew at that particular time of the year that that's where emu were going to be or kangaroo going to be, yeah. So, or well, like you said, oh, you know, floodwaters over there, look, I'm mm. coming from the, uh, down to Broken. Yeah, you can see it all from there. in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah like the fresh mussels. Yeah, yeah different ducks, seasons. Yeah. fish. Yeah, or fires in the distance or we could have been sitting here saying, well, well, we know the Tungurong down the south down there. And we had to go down there and talk to them about some business or something. Yoda, yoda, country, strong country. Murray River runs through our country. Strong country, strong blood. Goldman River runs through yoda country. Strong country. Strong blood, Yoda Yoda country, our country. Turtle big, strong blood, Yoda Yoda country, good spirit country.